Well, everyone checking in on a ton of crypto volatility, love these oversold bounces. So what we are watching here, let's start it off with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Golem. So what I'm watching was a lower high pattern on the hourly, and it was very clear this lower high. We could draw a trend line if you wanted to visualize it nice and easy, and also watching it on the five minute time frame. So I was asked about a couple entries in the chat room, and I said that I didn't like entries on support bounces. I liked entries on resistance breaks. And that was because the pattern was so clear. And this trend line is not good because I'm zooming in. But you can see here very clearly, we had the all out dump back yesterday. We had a very strong bounce and then we started fading. We started seeing lower highs and lower lows and every bounce was a clear lower high. So that's why I don't like making an entry off support. Although these oversold bounces did give nice short term gains. So we we're always playing these oversold bounces. But in terms of looking for a longer position rather than just a quick flip, in the lower high pattern kept us from making a bullish entry because it was very clear that we were kept seeing lower high, lower high needed to see a bull break in order to be making a longer term entry there. And until then, we're just playing these oversold bounces. Look at this five minute RSI under 30 solid bounce. First bounce here, we went from 2823 all the way up to 2880. And we just kept doing that oversold bounce dropped down to 20 RSI at this point, 20 RSI just below it. So the RSI levels are dropping down more significantly because we are in a downtrend. When we're in an uptrend, the RSI bounces right off that 30 level on the five minute time frame. When we're in a downtrend, it bounces from the upper teens or the 20 level. So here we are, we dip down to 20 multiple times just on this bounce and the volume coming in is absolutely insane. And we very scary, obviously, but you have to have conviction on buying these dips because it happens every single time. We've seen this bounce happen from these oversold levels so often at this point, it's it's literally happened over you know 30 times. So if we get stuck in a trade and have to eat a fairly decent loss, you know, if that happens one time out of 30, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm going to keep playing this pattern as long as it keeps printing out money. And on the hourly time frame, I kept watching the hourly time frame on this dump to make sure that we weren't going to be getting in on an oversold bounce and then have it have the bottom fall out on us. And what I was looking for was the RSI, obviously, again. So the hourly RSI, I saw we were right at 30 and I scroll back and say, okay, we have dipped below 30 on the way up here in the past few months, but it doesn't last long at all. So I am confident buying a five minute RSI at 20 or in the teens with an hourly RSI right at 30, knowing that if I do get stuck in a position and do see further downside, it's not going to last very long. Volume climax, I, I thought this candlestick was going to be a volume climax because it was the highest volume we had seen in a long time, but it didn't end up being a bullish reversal candlestick right at the end there as the candlestick was closing. We saw a fresh dump to make it a bearish candlestick. And then we saw a big time move to the downside. So a long lower wick, there's our bullish reversal candlestick on the hourly. Bitcoin is not confirming this bullish reversal candlestick yet. So one thing we need to note, we very clearly have a lower high and lower low pattern in play. So keep that in mind when you are determining your, your time frame for your trades. If you know we're in an uptrend, it's much easier to go longer term than if we're in a downtrend, I'm going to exit and take my profits sooner. So it's a, a shorter term downtrend. Obviously, the daily chart is still bullish, but as of right now, and it was really, you know, Mark Cuban calls it a bubble and then we get a, a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. The bears are just using that as a nice excuse to run the price to the downside, cause a little bit of fear, scoop up some cheap shares and just play this game that we've been playing over and over again. And we're, you know, little guys compared to these whales, but we're riding their coattails and picking up the scraps and getting these easy profits as well. So an oversold bounce is underway. The question is, can Bitcoin confirm this bullish reversal candlestick? On this bounce, I'm noticing two things. Number one, Bitcoin has about a 30 to 60, 60 second head start on the five minute time frame as to what we're watching compared to Ethereum. And number two, that's very significant, dollar volume. So the, the dollar volume on this candlestick, which was the volume climax, and again, volume climaxes often signal the top of an uptrend or the bottom of a downtrend. Here it was back there. We saw a four-hour bounce. Here it is again. We'll see how much bounce we get from here. But the volume behind this candlestick was 3,000. So 3,000 at 2,700, we're talking 608, just over $8 million in one hour on Bitcoin. Now we look at Ethereum. And Ethereum's one hour candlestick volume climax signaling the bottom, just like it did in the past, long lower wick, bullish reversal candlestick. Look at this bounce, much, much more significant on Ethereum. We're already confirming the bullish reversal candlestick. Dollar volume, 39,000 times, let's call it 250. And we are talking almost $10 million. We saw more dollar volume here on Ethereum than Bitcoin. That tells me more bulls are buying the dip. That tells me we're seeing a shift in attention with more activity in Ethereum 
And a lot of people think, you know, with the fork coming up in Bitcoin in August and, you know, the potential of Ethereum to overtake the market cap, I'm not going to make any wild guesses in terms of that. Uh, I'm a technical guy, not so much fundamental, but I am noticing, technically speaking, on these charts, the bounces are more significant in Ethereum. That tells me more bulls are interested in Ethereum. Remember back here in the videos, if you saw them, we saw the oversold bounce in Ethereum was much stronger than Bitcoin. We saw the bullish reversal candlestick with a longer lower wick. Let's compare this bounce real quick here. Look at this candlestick, not anywhere near as strong. And then in order to see continuation, it took about four or five days. Ethereum, one day, boom, ready ready to go for the bulls, new all-time high four, day, four days later. I'm seeing that again on a shorter term time frame here, this time the hourly. And I'm going to be playing these bounces on Ethereum rather than Bitcoin because of this fact. And again, it doesn't have to be much more clear than that. Not only the dollar volume higher, look at the second candlestick. No follow through right now on Bitcoin, big time follow through on Ethereum. So I did exit. I did play a bounce here on Ethereum and I've been trying to capture some of my trades live. It's just really, really difficult to do when I'm trying to be in the zone and, you know, execute. And I'll keep trying to do that uh, to give you guys some nice examples. But right now I made a bullish entry in Ethereum and a bit too soon I got in uh, in the 253, 254 range here on this bounce, on this oversold bounce attempt. And then it rolled over and I exited at 250 because the low of this candlestick was 250.22. So a stop triggered and so did a lot of other people's as we dumped. And then I made an entry again and really hard to figure out my average. And that's something that GDAX definitely needs to fix. They need to be able to tell us what our average position is because I'm entering, you know, four or five different positions and I'm just having to do rough head, rough math in my head in terms of determining what my entry average is so entered back in in the the 240s i honestly couldn't tell you where i entered in the 246s some orders in the 247s and then i just held out and i was confident holding there because of the hourly time frame same story oversold at 30 i know and even this rsi was under 30 when we were down here in the 240s the rsi was down you know in the mid to upper 20s so confident that even if i did have to sit on a red position for a while that i would look to hold longer term and get profit eventually that's pretty much how the, the cryptocurrency space has been going that will shift so that's not the case at some point but as of right now it's pretty much you can just ride it out and eventually make profit even if you make a bad entry so i stopped myself out i was able to get a few more eth because i re-entered i did eat a loss on that first trade but then i held for the bounce and i exited here on the second leg to the upside and i exited a, you know a little bit early i'm not trying to time the top don't care about that i just want to lock in my profit so i exited in the 256s and 257s scaled out and missed this you know little extra dollar to the upside at this point i am looking for a re-entry i'd like to see a pullback to you know, the low 250s to make another bull entry. I would definitely be looking to do that because of the strength I'm seeing in volume and on the hourly time frame. And let's see what else. I guess that's it for Ethereum and Bitcoin for now. Let's go to Litecoin and Gollum. So Litecoin seeing the same action. And again, I don't really want to play Litecoin because the moves that we're seeing are pretty much mirrored. We have the lower highs, the lower lows very clearly, oversold bounces. It's the same thing as Ethereum and Bitcoin, but the bounces and the attention and the dollar volume is more significant in those other names. So I'm not going to play the little brother here. I want to play the star of the show, which is Ethereum and Bitcoin. So same scenario, bullish reversal candlestick, volume climax, dollar volume here. Let's see, 50,000 on, let's see, a $30. So we're talking $1.5 million traded compared to seven and a half and 10 million. So obviously it's not even in the same league in terms of liquidity. And every time I enter LTC, I'm frustrated with myself because there's no liquidity. So I'm personally done with LTC. I don't see any reason why I would want to play it aside from ETH and BTC. Maybe if there's some news around it and we, we break from the correlation that we're seeing, but as of right now, that's not the case. So in terms of, let's go back here, just in terms of what the bulls need to break this trend, we have to see higher lows and higher highs on this bounce attempt. And again, Bitcoin is not following through right now. And if I were a Bitcoin bull holding, I'd be a little bit worried because we're not seeing what Ethereum is seeing. So what Ethereum needs to see is a higher low form on consolidation than a higher high for continuation. And in order for the bulls to retake control, we have to break these lower highs back in the mid 260s. I don't anticipate that happening anytime soon. The daily time frame here, while there is a nice lower wick of bulls buying the dip, look at the last scenario where we consolidated for 
three, four days before another leg to the upside. So I do believe this consolidation due to the volume behind this dump will take a little bit longer. I do believe it will take, you know, two, three days and we'll see if the bulls do another continuation move. But as of right now, because we are entering the consolidation phase on the daily time frame, I'm being more cautious. Like I said, I'm being quicker to exit my trades, lock in my profit, still playing these oversold bounces, but waiting a little bit longer on the RSI to get a little bit more oversold and taking it from there. So Golem has been trading inverse and I did flip my first Golem position. I've been holding long, but can't give up these opportunities because it's been very, very clear that everybody's taking profit and reloading. So all these lower highs on the hourly time frame are still in play. Our most recent lower high was at 2008, so 208, and then we just topped out at 2035. So I sold in the 20, the low 20s, and I rebought and added an extra, you know, 600 tokens to my position. That's all I'm going to be trying to do is just flipping and reloading profits. And this consolidation is a little bit different for me. Look at the consolidation on the pullbacks every time. In about four hours, we dump and we get back the vast majority of the move every time. And here on this consolidation, the first four hours, we didn't get back much of that move at all. And I'm watching the inverse relationship. There's absolutely an inverse relationship, or at least there was on this magnitude of this move. And let's just compare it to Ethereum on the five minute here real quick. So we had the all out dump on Ethereum and we hit the low and then we started bouncing. And in the same time, we had Gollum pulling back and let's see when the bottom of Gollum was. It was at about 4 p.m. And where was Ethereum at about 4 p.m.? We were right back up here. So here's where we were. And Ethereum's at the low of the day. Or I should say Gollum's at the low of the pullback, I should say. And we start dumping in Bitcoin and Ethereum. As this dump is going on, that's exactly when Gollum starts to break the lower high pattern on the five minute and show up. Look where our high was hit. High of Gollum was hit at 635. Ethereum, when did the bounce start? 610 615 so bounce gets underway Gollum pulls back and i'm not sure i wasn't watching all the other light coins but i am assuming there's an inverse relationship where money is going from one to the other and if we see an oversold bounce taking place we're going to see money leave the alts and go into those big names and if we see an all-out dump we're going to see money leave the big names and go to the altcoins so during this dump i was watching my position and the value of it just because i was curious of the correlation with bitcoin and from this point right up here to this point down here, my position dropped very, very little in value. And that's because as I'm dropping here, Bitcoin is, is rising and oversold bouncing. And that's really outweighing the pullback that we're seeing in the underlying position of Gollum. So I would say the pullback in terms of percentage, roughly in my head, I would say it was about a 1% pullback when in reality here for Gollum, we pulled back from 19.9 down to 19.5. So that's essentially about a 5% pullback almost roughly. So only pulled back 1%, even though the underlying pulled back much more significantly. And again, that's because Bitcoin is bouncing. So where do we stand from here? We'll see how this bounce plays out. We'll see if Bitcoin can catch up to the Ethereum bounce. I am going to be scouting for another entry in Ethereum. I'd like to get it in the low 250s. I'd like to see some of these, some of this cool off this bounce. And other than that, cautious on the daily time frame because we are entering consolidation after a multiple day breakout, hitting all time highs. And I'm going to be comparing it to these other pullbacks. I'm going to be watching volume and watching to see how much of the dip is getting bought in. And that's a new word. And more, more importantly, watching the dollar volume comparatively of Ethereum to Bitcoin. Because again, this dollar volume being more significant on the bounce is absolutely very significant in my opinion. So I appreciate you all watching. And we will continue to check in. Lots of fun. Hope you're having as much fun as I am. See you soon.